Hollywood. The Samuel Goldwyn Company presents American Gladiators. Selected from a nationwide search, 20 men and women have come to Hollywood to challenge our force of American Gladiators for a single honor to become American Gladiators champions. Now, here are your American Gladiators, Gemini, Lace, Nitro, Gold, Laser, Blaze, Thunder, Ice, Turbo, and Diamond. The host for American Gladiators, Mike Adamley and his co-host, Larry Zonka. Hi again, everyone. I'm Mike Adamley. Glad you could join us for this edition of the American Gladiators. Our quarterfinal round is underway, and for the contenders competing in the spotlight today, this is it. A win, they're in. A loss means elimination. My co-host needs no introduction. He's known simply as Zonk. Hall of Fame fullback from the Miami Dolphins, Mr. Larry Zonka. Larry, as we move closer to the championship, each event takes on a greater meaning. And because of that intensity, I think the matches that we are going to see today in the quarterfinal rounds are going to be extremely close. I think so. Uh, Any time you get to the corner finals, the, the point of the thing is the athletic ability gets better and better. And I think what we have to stress to the contenders is that in this competition, each point means so much. Each second translates as a point, and that one point can literally win them the championship. There is absolutely no room for mistakes. And with that in mind, let's meet the contenders for this quarterfinal round. In our women's quarterfinal, please welcome back Esther Ratner of Tempe, Arizona, a college professor. And her opponent, Cinda Metzer of Salt Lake City, Utah, an industrial specialist. In the men's competition, here's Dale Thompson of Ontario, California, a deputy with the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department. And his opponent, Lincoln Simons of Studio City, California, a stuntman. Cinda, an honor student at Northern Arizona University, I noticed that in the preliminary round you took a very cerebral approach to the games. You studied each event, were able to discern what you have to do, and you did so. Uh, you are now the number two seed in the quarterfinals. What did you learn from the prelims that you'll apply here? Well, I think that it was good to think about each event, but as time goes by, the, the athletes are getting tougher and the gladiators aren't getting any easier. So I think I'm not going to have as much time to think this time. I'm just going to have to go for it. So at some point, athletic instinct has to take over. Yes, it does. Lincoln, a stuntman by trade. You specialize in, in high falls and car crashes and fake fights. But I get the feeling that there's nothing fake about your competition against the American gladiators. Yeah, you're right, Mike. Uh, there's nothing fake about this, and I have the bruises to prove it. But you know what? I wouldn't be here if it was any other way. You healed and ready to go? I'm ready. Best of luck. Larry? Esther, you've been through it. Now, let me ask you something. Which events are you looking forward to today, and which events are you not looking forward to? Well, actually, the answer to that question in both cases is the joust, because I really got hammered on the joust, so this time I want to come back and do better on it. And also, I want to tell my students out there in industrial design that I wasn't getting hammered. I was just product testing the safety equipment. I see. That's, uh, I'm glad you, you related that to us. We were all kind of wondering about that. Dale, you've had experience in the NFL, played some of the Denver Broncos. You've been through double sessions. You've been knocked around a little bit, been stiff after. Is this comparable to, like, say, double sessions? Well, I don't know. I, I probably wouldn't want to go against, um, against these guys any more than I did in the NFL with those guys. Well, six, NFL was six weeks long, and uh, I think I would enjoy going into CFL for two weeks in that camp. <laughs> Are you all healed up? Are you ready to compete? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. Uh, every time I look at these guys, I get a little bit more frightened every time, though, but <laughs> I just have to do my best. Sometimes fear is the best motivation. Good luck, Dale. Good luck. Esther, Mike? Dale, they are all inspiring. Esther, I've got bad news. Our first event is the joust. Our gladiators are ready. Our contenders are ready. Let's get ready to rock and roll.
This is how our competition works on the American Gladiators. Our contenders, two men and two women, will compete against the Gladiators in seven very rigorous events. Now, the contender who amasses the most points in those seven confrontations automatically now moves on to the semifinals and also a step closer towards our championship final. At stake, over $150,000 in cash and prizes, and we are set to go with our first event. Here's Larry with the rundown. Our first competition in this quarterfinal match is the joust, where a contender has 30 seconds to knock a gladiator from his platform for 10 points. Thunder's up first for the gladiators, and he'll start off against Dale Thompson. Dale, a father of four, advanced to the quarterfinals by defeating Rob Batigi in the first round. And quickly, Thunder goes to work, almost knocking Dale's pugil stick out of his hands. Dale definitely on the defensive here, trying to keep his balance, assuming that defensive posture. But Thunder with that overhand right puts Dale away, and Dale's wife can't believe it. So no points for Dale Thompson. Well, our stuntman is up next, and actually Lincoln Simons comes from a family of stunt people. And earlier he told us what they thought of American Gladiators. My mom and dad, they've really been a boost because uh, they've seen this show too, and they think it's perfect for me because they've seen the way I've grown as a kid and, and um, pounded my body, and they, they think it's like one of those things they tell me, hey, Link, go for it. And Lincoln, our second seed coming into the quarterfinals. Actually, he stood tall against Thunder earlier, defeating him in the prelims. But not this time around. Thunder goes to work quickly. Bang, zoom, and Lincoln is down. That quick one-two combo pays off two seconds. Lincoln, this is definitely not another day at the shop. I know you're a stunt man. You're used to the cameras. You're used to the lights. Your expertise in the area of car wrecks and fights. But this, that was certainly a fight. Yeah, it was a real one. He hit me with a good blow. I wasn't ready for it. I should have been a little lower. Lots more competition ahead. Good luck the rest of the day. Thank you. Thunder, people think the event is all physical, but there's a lot of mental strategy involved. Explain Absolutely. that a little bit. Well, it's anticipation, you know? You got to kind of play both offense and defense up here. So, you know, when he makes a move, you got to counter it and hit, and then come back, counter it and hit. And that's just like boxing, basically. Well, you countered, you hit, and you won. That's the bottom line. Thunder. All right. It's usually lightning that strikes without warning, but in this round, it's thunder as he shuts out the men. But there's more to come on American Gladiators, including the wall and atmosphere, but next, the women's joust. Here at Universal Studios Hollywood, Esther Ratner is first up for the women in the joust, and she'll be taking on ice. Esther, the 37-year-old college professor at Arizona State University, was disqualified in the prelims by gold because she couldn't get up from the kneeling position and that's exactly where Ice has her now. I think she's doing a great job just staying on that platform and taking that kind of pounding. Say, Ice sounds like Jimmy Connors with some of those grunts after swinging that pugil stick. Ice has actually wore herself out. Her arms are actually tired from hitting Esther. Esther's won the five points for the draw, and her mother's delighted. Esther, that, that match against Ice was just like the song, hit me with your best shot. And Ice hit you with everything. I mean everything. You took the phrase defending yourself to a new level. <laughs> That's true. I told, I told you in the opening that I'd be product testing the safety equipment. I think I did that a lot. Ice, that was quite a workout for you. I'll tell you, man. I was feeling sorry for her. I didn't want to hit her anymore. <laughs> the last time she went down on me, I was like, blow the whistle or something because it's like, I'm feeling sorry for hitting her in the head so many times here. I know it doesn't feel good. I've been hit in the head before. Hey, congratulations to both of you. That was enjoyable to watch. <laughs> Up next to challenge Isis Cinda Mincer of Salt Lake City, Utah. Cinda advanced with a win in the first round. It is now the women's second seed. In the preliminary joust, Cinda drew Diamond and defeated her, but oh, now God. Ice may be just a bit tougher. Cinda very quick with that initial strike. Ice fighting back. Oh, Cinda missing with a big overhead blow. Throws her off balance, but she maintains. 
And Ice not nearly as aggressive as she was against Esther. There's a couple of shots. And Mike, you can hear the impact of those shots. It sounds almost like a boxer delivering a blow to his opponent's head. Sydney's got to be a little dazed after all of that. And I'm sure that Ice is more than a little tired. Cinda, congratulations. You are the first female contender that I have seen who was able to deliver the first blow. You weren't afraid of her. You went right after her from the very beginning. I figured her, if she hit me first, I'd be off. So I just gave it everything I had. She hits hard. <laughs> she hit you hard a couple of times and nearly sent you flying. How were you able to keep your balance? Just try to remember my feet. Try to keep them on the platform. <laughs> It works. It's hard when you're spinning around. <laughs> Ice, there's something about you on that pedestal. It seems to bring the best out of the contenders. They're getting tougher and tougher, Mike. <laughs> you know, and they, the more they're up here, the more they're getting used to it. Great match between Cinda and Ice. Thank you. I don't know if I'd ever get used to getting hit on the head with that pugil stick. Ice is tough, but both women managed to take away five points in their first battle of this, the quarterfinal round. There's no score in our men's matchup after one event as they prepare for Atmosphere. And in our version of Demolition Derby, the contenders will attempt to score by rolling themselves into one of four red, white, and blue scoring pods. Each goal worth three points. Now, it's not an easy task, and to make it even more difficult, our two gladiators will be caged inside spheres of their own, all bent on trying to stop the contenders from scoring. Lincoln Simons getting loaded inside of his atmosphere, and now Dale Thompson. As we see our first gladiator, Nitro, loading up in his atmosphere, and our second gladiator, Turbo, loading into his vehicle. And if you're uncomfortable in close quarters, this event is not for you, but actually the contenders and gladiators will not be thinking about anything except getting those atmospheres moving. 60 seconds. Referee Larry Thompson gets the match underway, and Lincoln Simons has really got that atmosphere moving. He had a little different strategy there at the beginning, Mike. He took off like he was going to head for the scoring pod. The gladiator tried to head him off, but instead he went all the way to the end, but was knocked out anyway. And he gets knocked out again. And actually it is Dale Thompson who scores first, and again Lincoln Simons can't settle down. The gladiator's doing a good job of keeping him from scoring. Mike Lincoln's doing a great job of getting the atmosphere up and down the court, but he can't seem to settle. But obviously, Turbo has a lot to do with that as he forces him out of the pod once again. Nitro with some good defense on Dale Thompson, who leads at this point, but this time, oh, they're going to give it to him. They ruled that uh, Lincoln Simons, that goal counted right there, so he picks up three points. Almost had another three, but time runs out. Lincoln did a great job in our first round of competition in scoring this, but he had a few problems today. Mike? Lincoln, a, a, a scoring goal in the nick of time. You were running out of time and trailing 3 nothing, but you pulled it off. That was tough, but I saw him go w one way and I went to the other. And it's tough. You get in these pods, you just got to settle in. And I've been in them, but I just don't settle in long enough. You're modest. Okay, Lincoln, way to go. We're going to call you the Bulldog Man. Lincoln had five opportunities of scoring possibilities, and you knocked him out of the scoring pod four out of the five times. Well, the audience here likes it to be exciting and likes a lot of slam-bam, so I figured I'd let him get it close, but not too close. Good job. Enjoyed watching him. So after two events, now in the men's quarterfinal, Lincoln and Dale are tied at three apiece. The women are also in a deadlock 5-5 five, five, as they get ready for atmosphere. And Diamond and Blaze will be our two gladiators who will be trying to keep our contenders from scoring. Esther Ratner and Cinda Menser. Both small people in stature and look even smaller inside of that atmosphere, don't they, Mike? But both blessed with good athletic ready, ability. Ready. And I think here in the quarterfinals, ready, now that they have the prelims ready, under their belt, ready. they've got a better ready, handle ready. on how to get these atmospheres moving. And again, those plumes of smoke are nitrogen gas, which indicates to the crowd, the audience, and the referee that indeed the contenders have scored. Banging going on early. 
little traffic jam. Cinda has a chance to break open and does. She's looking for the score down at the far end. Can she get it to settle? Yep, she's got a score. And she draws some attention as the other three atmospheres come down to get in on the action. Looks like rush hour traffic there <laughs> on Mars. Good block by Blaze. Now she's going to hold her up against the rail. Esther finding the going pretty tough at this point. Blaze is shadowing her. Again, Senda breaks into the open. In scoring attitude, can she do it? Nope. Knocked out again. I'll tell you what, Cinda keeps the pressure on the Gladiators. She gets bumped out once, but she rarely gets bumped out two times in a row, and that's the end of the match. Cinda picking up two scores for six points, and Esther being shut out. You know, a rolling stone may gather no moss, but a rolling sphere can gather points if you know how to use it. And Cindy, you got a crash course right before the event started. It paid off to the tune of two golds worth six points. Yeah, <laughs> I got hit a lot in that last event. Really, the hard part of this event is getting the sphere to stop. Yes, um, you get it in the pot, and then you just get knocked right out. So, Cindy, well done. Cindy wins the battle in atmosphere six zip. So after two events, she takes a 11 to 5 lead over Esther. Still to come on American Gladiators is Assault. Breakthrough and conquer, but the wall is up next. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood, and here's Larry Zonka with a rundown on our next event. The wall is an event where our two contenders compete simultaneously, each trying to be first to the top of the 32-foot high summit. But it's not a free climb. For 10 seconds after they begin, the gladiators go up after them to pull them off. As we see Dale Thompson eyeing the wall and putting together his strategy, he'll be trailed up the wall by Gemini in this event. Gemini looks more than ready. As we see Lincoln Simons, and he's going to be hearing the footsteps of Laser right behind him. Ready? Lincoln in the blue, Dale in the red. Lincoln made it to the top of the wall in the preliminary round. Let's see how he does here. Again, the location of those hand grips have been moved here in the quarterfinal round. So this ascent a little more look. difficult than it was in the prelims. And look at Laser. <laughs> he just went right up. Lincoln was doing a good job, too. He was up the wall very well. Laser just went up with leaps and bounds and pulled him off. Well, Dale has basically now a free run, but he's trying to hang on for dear life there. Gemini is having his own set of problems. So Dale needn't worry about him, but he's so, so close. Dale has that same problem, getting both hands on one grip as he finally successfully gets a hold of the top of the wall and scores 10 points. Dale Thompson, you were the DT Express for the first half of the wall, and then you slowed down a bit, but the bottom line, you made it to the top, 48 seconds. And that was worth 10 points. Yeah, I tried to do my best. You know, when you look down at a big guy like uh, Gemini, <laughs> there's no way to just stop. Congratulations. Well, Dale and his family have reason to celebrate as Dale wins the wall 10 zip and now takes the lead over Lincoln 13 to 3 after three events. After two events on the women's side, Cinda has 11 5 lead over Esther as they await the wall. Larry, one of the byproducts of the American Gladiators is camaraderie between the contenders. As Esther Ratner explains, they are united by a common goal. When I first came out, I had a feeling that the competitors would be very secretive about their ideas for how to compete against the gladiators but everybody's sharing ideas and helping each other because it's basically us against the gladiators as esther eyes the wall she's going to be followed up the wall by lace and cinda will be followed by gold Ready? again each contender given a 10 second head start both contenders doing very well at the beginning Prior to this competition, Esther did practice some rock climbing, and right now it's paying off. Cinda looking very good as well. Both Cinda and Esther having some problems at the three-quarter mark, seemingly stalling a little bit. Esther in a definite stall there, and Cinda is desperately looking for a grip to hold on to and pull herself up. Now Esther's got it going. 
As Esther takes that big gamble, that last lunge, gets a hold of the top of the wall and hikes herself up, and Senda comes loose from the wall. Esther, the product tester and wall molester, you got angry at this 32-foot wall. I did. I hope the cameras didn't pick up some of my mumbling. <laughs> But yeah. You know, 20 years from now, a lot of your friends are not going to believe that you made it up this 32 foot wall. So just for posterity, Esther, smile, baby. Congratulations. A mere picture perfect climb gives Esther 10 points for the wall, as well as a 15 11 lead over Cinda. Meanwhile, over in our men's quarterfinal, Dale Thompson leads Lincoln Simons 13 to 3 as they now get ready for Breakthrough and Conquer. And this is a two-part event where a contender can earn five points for scoring a touchdown in Breakthrough and out-wrestling a gladiator in Conquer. And in the men's case, it'll be Nitro defending in Breakthrough and Thunder in the Conquer ring. So there's the possibility a contender can walk away from this event with 10 points, but Nitro is not buying any of that, neither is Thunder. They are bent on shutting out the contenders, and Lincoln Simons is up first. Ready? <laughs> I've heard of broken field running, but that's a, that's a little much. Nitro's mistake was going for Lincoln's head. His headgear gave way, but Lincoln's body didn't, and that allowed him to cross the goal line and pick up five points. Now he's got ten seconds to try to knock any part of Thunder's body outside of that conquer ring. Nice, nice move. Lincoln employing a little different strategy, a headlock on Thunder and pulling him out of the ring. You know, Lincoln, normally as a stuntman, you do all the tough stuff for the movie stars. This time, I'm sure you might have liked a stuntman to replace you. I don't know how I uh, got away with I mean, I, I was just lucky that he got a hold of my home and he slipped off. And you gave up the body against Thunder and the Conquer Ring. I just, I just had to go uh, maniac. You know, the guy's so big, I had to just give everything I had. Just... I have to get more points. <laughs> well, you got 10 on this event, Breakthrough and Conquer. A great, great effort. Lincoln Simons. As we see our two gladiators, Thunder and Nitro, getting set to take on Dale, who is now tied with Lincoln. Dale trying a little shake and bake, and now the spin move. Nitro hangs on and stops him just short of the goal line. No points there. Thunder getting nice and low. He's gonna make sure that Dale doesn't get any part of his body to knock out of the ring. Dale running out of time. Maybe a chance for one last ditch effort. Thunder doing a good job of keeping Dale pushed down low and keeping him away from his legs. The gladiator shut out Dale, so Lincoln wins this event 10 to zip. Once again, the men's score is tied 13-13 after four events. Still to come on American Gladiators, Powerball in the game of assault. But up next, women's breakthrough and conquer. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood, where the women are next in this quarterfinal round of the American Gladiators. And after three events, Esther Ratner leads Cinda Menser 15 to 11. As we see our two gladiators coming out, Ice in breakthrough and Blaze in conquer. And once again, an opportunity for the contender to win 10 points, five if they're successful in the breakthrough portion of this event, and another five if they can pull it off in the conquer ring. Cinda Menser is up first. She trails by four. Ice getting set, and Cinda with some dazzling speed there, a dazzling burst of speed, freezes Ice in time and picks up five points. Blaze trying to use the Phantom technique on Cinda, but Cinda having no part of it, gets her in a sort of a hammer lock and drags her right out of the ring. That really muscled Blaze. Cinda, I think our audience is starting to get an indication of just how tough you are. Not just tough, but quick, and that quickness paid off in breakthrough. Yeah, I'm getting sick of being called a toothpick. <laughs> A powerful toothpick, so powerful that you, you took the uh, normally immovable Blaze right out of the ring. She's tough. She's real tough. <laughs> Cinda, you pick up another 10 points. Great effort in Breakthrough and Conquer. Cinda Menser. 
As we see a look of determination on Ice's face, fixing to take on Esther, who has a look of determination on her face. This should add up to be a good battle. Ready? <laughs> Esther trying to throw a few moves, but Ice not taking the bait, and she sends Esther to the turf. In the circle, wait for now Esther wait for will try to do a little bit better. At least that's what her mom hopes in the conquer ring against Blaze. Esther having worked out with some of the Phoenix Cardinals on her wrestling moves, and it pays off as she takes Blaze out of the ring. Esther, you are a practitioner of Ja Shin Do, which is the way of self-belief, and it's obvious to everyone here watching you that you have great belief in your skills. I tried to. I do believe that um, there's no limitations for size or age. I'm just going, going for everything. Well, it certainly hasn't been a limitation for you here. Congratulations on picking up the five points. Esther. Thank you. So after losing to Ice in Breakthrough, Esther goes right after Blaze for five points in Conquer. However, Cinda takes this event 10 to 5, and with that, she also takes the lead over Esther 21 to 20. After four events in the men's competition, Dale and Lincoln are deadlocked at 13 as they take aim at assault. And Larry, in this event, the contender has an opportunity to hit a target located above the gladiator with five different weapons. First, a crossbow. Then it's on to a rocket launcher. If unsuccessful there, a contender can move on to a third safe zone where a cannon awaits. If the contender misses there, it's on to a fourth safe zone and a chance to fire a pistol. And if that shot fails, a final opportunity. Behind this barrier, there are three softballs. Now, if the contender runs out of ammo and there's still time left on the clock, he can make a final dash towards the finish line. If he crosses that finish line, he can earn four points for the draw. As we look over Thunder's shoulder, getting ready for Dale. Ready! Dale making sure he keeps an eye on Thunder sliding into that first safe zone, and uh, it appears that his leg or his knee or his ankle buckled underneath him as he went down into the slide. Dale's wife, Jennifer, looking on with concern, hoping her husband Stay is down, all right. Dale. Don't move. Stay down. Well, Mike, you can hear Larry Thompson, our referee, asking Dale to stay down. Dale's a competitor, obviously wants to get up and try his weight on it, as you see our two trainers assisting him. Well, it appears that Dale is all right. He's walking under his own power, limping a bit. Let's hope he can continue. We'll have to wait and see. In the meantime, Thunder is set now for our second contender in this quarterfinal round, Lincoln Simons. Lincoln, the professional stuntman. And you are going to see him fly here in assault. Lincoln, being a stuntman, he should be right at home in an, in an event like this. Certainly in an environment like this. Lincoln shot almost <laughs> picked Thunder off. Well, if Thunder was at home, he's not anymore. Now he's ducking. <laughs> Thunder trying to time one of his shots to pick off Lincoln when he comes into view. goes over Thunder's head, so he's getting closer. Successive approximation. <laughs> Another shot that almost hit the mark. That shot was off the mark, and Thunder finally says, enough is enough, you're going down, son. And he picked Lincoln Simons off. Lincoln, you guys were laying down a real pattern of fire there. Just trying to hit that dot. It's it's smaller than what you think when you're shooting at it. Let me ask you something. Were you shooting at the bullseye or were you shooting at thunder? Anything I could hit. If I can't hit the bullseye, I hit him. You got him moving a couple of times. I hope so. It was a good good effort on your part. Good luck in the future. Thank you. All right. So Thunder holds the men scoreless in assault, and after five events, the score remains tied at 13. Now, as the women prepare for assault, Cinda holds a one-point lead over Esther. Diamond will be doing the honors for the Gladiators in Assault, and Esther is up first. Ready! It's funny, Esther likened herself to a products tester earlier for some of these off-the-wall events, but she's adapted pretty well. Now if she can just find the target. That shot with the rocket launcher, Aaron. Way low and left with a cannon. 
But Diamond doesn't miss there. She picks Esther off. No points for her. And now an opportunity for Cinda to pad her one-point lead. That toothpick image might be a little helpful here, Mike. She's not all that big a target. Stands tall with the crossbow, but her shot missed. Whoa. <laughs> Remind me not to go bird hunting with her. And Diamond, I'll tell you what, she has demonstrated that she's quite the shot up there. And Cinda goes down as well, so no points for either Esther or Cinda in the game of assault. So Cinda still holds a 21-20 lead over Esther. Still to come, the Eliminator. But up next, Powerball. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood. Here's Mike. As sometimes happens here on the American Gladiators, injuries are a part of the game, and unfortunately for Dale Thompson, a twisted ankle sustained in the assault has caused him uh, to have to drop out of the competition. And it's uh, really kind of a shame, Dale, because you were going great guns and were in terrific position point-wise coming into Powerball. Yeah, sometimes these things kind of happen, and you just have to, uh, you know, think about what you actually do for a living and, and try to heal up as soon as possible. And, uh, you know, my job is more important. And I would like to go on and show, hey, I'm tough enough to do this, but what is that going to do? It's not going to prove anything. So uh, I think Rob is going to do it. He's going to turn it on and put on the juice right now. You don't have anything to prove to anybody, Dale Thompson. You gave us a great showing, and uh, heal well, okay? okay? Thank you. Rob, you get a, uh, a great breath of fresh air here. You had the highest point total among the losers in the preliminary rounds. That's why you're the number one alternate. And now you take over. You get 13 points that Dale had accumulated. And that puts you in the hunt because you're tied coming into Powerball with Lincoln. I feel very fortunate for that. Um, I'm, I feel so bad for Dale because he's the one that uh, got me in the preliminary rounds. And uh, we, we acquired to be such good friends. And uh, I'm going to try to do it for you, Dale. Rob, I know you won't let him down. Best of luck in Powerball. Thanks. Well, we certainly hope the best for Dale Thompson, who leads Rob Petigi in perfect position after five events. Tied at 13 with Lincoln Simons, we get ready for Powerball. And Larry and Powerball, Rob will be introduced to some familiar faces. Rob, remember these guys? Laser, Gemini, and Turbo? I know Lincoln Simons remembers the trio. They are tough, and they are bent on shutting out our contenders here. Ready? In this quarterfinal round, Larry Thompson gets the match underway. Lincoln with the quick move, but Turbo knocks it away. Rob scored, however. Watch your head, no score. Laser introduces uh, Lincoln to that cylinder. Rob getting worked over by Gemini. Lincoln desperately trying to get away. Turbo with a great defensive job. Boom. Turbo almost driving Lincoln's head into the turf. Lincoln is double teamed and trapped back there. Rob tries a stiff arm, doesn't get away with it. Link puts a great move on and then takes the big hit. And Rob making the most of his second chance despite taking a tremendous pounding for his efforts. <laughs> He's going to win this match in Powerball. Good showing by both our contenders. Mike? Lincoln, I don't think I've ever seen a contender who had to work as hard as he did for one goal. You had to put him up 18 moves down there against those two gladiators hemming you in, but somehow you managed to do it. Yeah, I'm glad I got one score at least. Seemed like they were keying on me a little bit. You know, I think they also realized, though, that uh, you realized that you might have been in a little bit of trouble point-wise, and you made one bold, daring move towards that center cone. Yeah. I just, uh, I figured maybe something different, but it didn't work. Two points, and they were well-earned, Lincoln. Rob, great start coming in as an alternate, and I know you got that gippy ankle yourself that you sustained, so uh, congratulations. Good job. Rob comes in and quickly wins Powerball 4-2. to two. That means after six events, he now takes the lead over Lincoln 17-15. to 15. But Over in our women's quarterfinals, Cinda holds a one-point lead over Esther as they get ready to play Powerball. And standing in their way, well, that'll be our three gladiators, gold, ice, and lace. And things are about to get rough. And although Cinda and Esther are a little bit lighter than some of our other contenders, they have proved themselves to be plenty tough. How tough? Well, Cinda told us why this game of Powerball doesn't bother her. When I was about 12, my brothers had just gotten into football. And 
they figured that they needed more practice than what they got on the field, so they dressed me up in their pads and tackled me and chased me around the yard. That's how I got to be so fast. Well, she'll need some of that speed here, Larry. I love, the, I love her attitude. Three older brothers got to make it tough. Right? Wow, what a move there. Ice and Gold had her double team. She split the double team and scored. Esther gets pushed out of bounds, comes back in, and Cinder with some determination forces the ball down in the scoring pod. Nice burst of speed there by Esther as she scored. Cinder having some problems head on head with ice. She just had, can't overcome that power, but uses her speed and almost scores on the other goal. Esther trying to work against Lace again, and uh, <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. It looks like a pas they do as Lace finally takes her down. Time winding down now, and that's it. So Esther outscores Cinder six to two in women's Powerball, and as a result, we have our fourth women's lead change. Now 26-23 in favor of Esther. Who will advance on to the semifinals? We'll find out next with the Eliminator. Come back to Universal Studios Hollywood, and we are ready now for our final event, the Eliminator. Mike, both contenders start at the treadmill and must run against the belt in an effort to reach the top. Once they get there, each contender must cross a 30-foot span using a specially designed handbike. Then it's across a balance beam where the gladiators throw weighted blocking pads in an attempt to knock the contenders off. And now, Larry, the fun really begins. The contenders have to scramble up this 20-foot cargo net, and then it's a wild ride down the zip line, which carries the contenders over the entire length of the arena floor. Then it's a final straightaway where the contenders have to clear a set of hurdles. Then they have to make an important choice. Which lane to pick? Behind three of those doors lie American gladiators, all determined to stop the contenders from crossing the finish line. Cinda Menser trails Esther Ratner by three points. That means Cinda would need to beat Esther by a second and a half to advance to the semifinals. Both women ready to go. Ready. And they're on their way. Cinda, the first up the treadmill. Esther having a little trouble with that treadmill. We'll see what happens on the handbike. And bike requires not only strength, but finesse as well. Cinda gets herself across, and now the balance beam. Esther having a little trouble and falls off of the hand bike, missing the platform completely, opening a large lead for Cinda. Barring a major mistake, she should advance to the semifinals, but I'll tell you what, Esther not about to give up. <laughs> Here comes Cinda down the zip line. I think she may be sensing victory over the hurdles. Now she's got to get past one gladiator, and there she comes across the finish line. Esther getting to the top of the cargo net, and I'm not so sure she won't run out of time before she can get down to the finish line. Esther's worst enemy at this point is the clock, if she can make it down the straightaway, at least finishing. No, nope, she doesn't quite make it, but she does pick the right alley. Frags it through. There's one tired gal. That was a tough setback falling off the hand bike. Cinda and Esther have been tough competitors all through the competition, but at the same time, close friends. Esther, you actually went into this Eliminator final with a 1.5 second lead, and I think the hand bike did you in. It's true, I couldn't reach to get off of it. I tried swinging, went for it. And that's the way I've been doing it this whole competition. I'm going for it. Just couldn't swing fast and far enough. Got pulled off. I tell you what, Esther, you were great. We're gonna miss you too. You're a great performer. <laughs> Cindy, you told us earlier that your friends kind of have a nickname for you that's not very flattering because of your slender, wiry bill. They call you Toothpick. I got news for you. You've graduated. You're a bona fide two by four. <laughs> that was a big performance. Thanks a lot. I just gave it my all. 24 years old, one of the youngest contenders here on American Gladiators, but Cinda is going on to the semifinals. But my 37-year-old Esther Ratner gave a very good account of herself and will have many great stories to tell her students back at ASU as we prepare for the men's competition. 
and it'll be Rob Batiji versus Lincoln Simons. Rob with a two-point lead over Lincoln. That means Lincoln would have to beat Rob by one second to advance to the semifinals. Not much of a difference in this eliminator competition. Rob in the red, Lincoln in the blue. Lincoln, the first up. Now across with a hand bike. He's really got that thing moving. Rob, on the other hand, having a lot of trouble with the hand bike. That's a little surprising. Rob has good upper body strength. He just can't get that thing going, but Lincoln is going like a house of fire. Scrambling his way up the cargo net. This is going to be a fun finish for him. Woo! Big swing on that zip line. Over the hurdles. Have to take on Thunder. That won't be a problem. He's got this thing won. He advances to the semis. And Rob, it looks like he's going to run out of time. Rob, of course, replaced Dale Thompson after Dale got hurt in the assault. You can hear the crowd counting down the time. And that's it for Rob Batichi. Rob will undoubtedly look back and recall that the hand bike was his Waterloo. Rob came in kind of late. We had an injury to fellow. You, you took over the baton, came in, did pretty good in Powerball. Then coming into this, you were just a matter of two seconds, just one point behind, really, or one second, two points behind. And I got a little hung up on the hanging bike. I tried to do it for you, Dale, and uh, sorry, guy. Thank you, Rob. Well, congratulations. You flew through it, my man. It's a lot like stunt work, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit. I try to relate it to it. You know, give it your all for the best. Congratulations and welcome to our semifinals. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a big round of applause for our contestants? Lincoln Simons, he's moving on. 47-17, the final.